Good morning, everybody, and thanks to the organizer for the kind invitation. Uh, I will try in this talk to highlight the uh, benefits and limitations of uh, animal research to the omega-3 uh, industry. First of all, there are huge differences between humans and animals. Difference in body mass, difference in lifespan, anatomy, enzyme expression. If we look uh, at the third part of the slide, you see that for basal metabolic rate, it's quite lower per gram of body mass in dog than in mouse or in rat. And if we look at heart rate and glucose consumption, they are quite higher in mouse than in a rat than in human. Uh, I will take two uh, examples of pharmacological studies in animal rodents and in humans showing the limitation of uh, animal models. And I will take by two examples about anxiety and, and depression. Uh, rodents model uh, uh, have been tested with uh, quite a lot of uh, methods. They are listed here. Uh, and uh, one point which uh, cannot be studied in uh, animals is the risk of suicide, by example. Uh, I will take the example of the poor efficacy of uh, neurokinin and k one antagonist, which has positive effect in animals, but lack of effect in humans, and unacceptable neuropsychiatric side effects of uh, CB1 receptor antagonist. And this difference has significant cost implication for the industry and, of course, negative impact uh, on patients. Here you have five studies with uh, uh, a prepotent, which is uh, NK1 receptor antagonist, which uh, is, uh, has been developed uh, to be uh, an uh, anxiolytic and antidepressive drug. All these data are positive in uh, rodents, in uh, yellow mice, rats, javils. But uh, when studied in humans, there was a lack of efficacy uh, of uh, this uh, drug, uh, with no difference between uh, placebo. Uh, if we now look to uh, Remonabant, it has been developed to decrease food intake, and it truly decreases food intake in rodents and in humans. But in rodents, in addition, uh, it has an anti-anxiolytic effect similar to diazepam and an antidepressive effect similar to fluoxetine. And in addition, it has an anti-stress effect. But when studied in humans, uh, it induces uh, very numerous uh, psychiatric disorders. It increases anxiety, it increases depression, it increases depressed mood. For that, uh, this uh, RCT in humans has been stopped prematurely for ethical reasons, and the drug has been withdrawn by the company because of risk of suicide. So now uh, we look at animal models for study of omega-3 effects on depression or Alzheimer's disease. As you know, there is uh, a huge controversy about uh, omega-3 and depression, <coughs> mood disorders, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and uh, among factors which could explain this controversy, a uh, recent study has shown that uh, when studying uh, fatty acid composition post-mortem in prefrontal cortex of patients with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depressive disorder. Uh, there was no difference, and it was also reported by Stephen Kunan yesterday about AD. Whatever the data in humans, some of the data are positive uh, anyway, uh, maybe we don't look to the good end point. Uh, major depressive disorder uh, is an association of emotional, behavioral, and somatic symptoms, and is also associated to uh, cognitive affective biases, which are cognitive processes uh, such as perception, attention, learning, memory, which are influenced by emotion. And negative CRBs occur uh, 
with, with depressive uh, sim symptoms and uh, also increase the risk of relapse and vulnerability in, uh, in humans. And uh, for that, uh, models, animal models of CIBs have been developed. And uh, neural circuits are now well known for reward in yellow, for aversion in blue, and, uh, and common pathway for reward aversion in yellow, blue. This model has been validated uh, in, uh, in rodents by using drugs or situations similar to what uh, they do in humans. Uh, in yellow, on the left, you see that antidepressive drugs or social enrichment induces positive CRBs, as in humans. In blue, you see that remonabant retinoic acid stress induce negative CRBs, as, it, as is as in humans. And for addictive drug, cocaine, etc., it's intermediary as in humans. So this model has been validated. I didn't find a, any study about omega-3 by using this model, but my conclusion for this point is that experimental studies of depression should or could use evaluation of CAB in rodent models and compare specific effects of EPA versus DHA knowing that EPA uh, seems to be uh, of more interest, uh, maybe, uh, in human studies than DHA for depression. But the, these experimental studies should also study interaction of omega-3 with proven beneficial pharmacological treatments in humans, because no MD will treat a severe depression uh, without drugs for ethical reasons. Concerning Alzheimer's uh, disease, I will be uh, very short on this slide because it, it has been developed uh, very well yesterday by, by Dr. Wilkinson. In fact, uh, our study are not very positive. Uh, we don't know exactly why, because uh, fatty acid composition is not always uh, abnormal in brain of uh, AD patient because there are differences between familial AD and late AD, because uh, duration of study is maybe too short. Uh, so the more longer study are about 1.8% of total lifespan in humans, where we are, whereas we have modeled in rats uh, of uh, equivalent to 10% uh, of total lifespan. Anyway, uh, a good potential model uh, could be uh, the mouse model of familial form of AD. These transgenic mouse lines co overexpress five, five mutations of familial AD in humans. And uh, these mice develop almost exactly the same brain abnormalities than patients with familial AD and cognitive uh, impairment. Here on this slide, you see on the upper part, A, B, C, D, that there is uh, an increase in uh, content of amyloid beta-42, as in humans, which spread all over the brain over a short period of only nine months. For amyloid beta-40, uh, it's quite lower as in humans, and in addition, there is a proliferation of astrocytes and microglia as in human familial uh, AD. In addition, uh, cortex uh, is thinner in a uh, transgenic mouse as compared to wild type, and there is uh, neuron loss as in human disease. And uh, to finish, these transgenic mice have a severe cognitive impairment when aged for five months. I found only one study uh, using DHA in this model, and uh, the author have shown that DHA here decreases uh, the content of amyloid beta-42 and uh, significantly decreases all markers of inflammation into the brain of this uh, mouse. And it completely prevents the, uh, the impairment of cognition. But it was a very short-term study, 
five, seven days and with a huge dose, 200 milligrams per kilo. Long-term studies in rat model, equivalent to 10% of total lifespan of rats, have shown in this systematic review that uh, it induced a significant decrease, it's a meta-analysis, significant decrease in amyloid beta deposition, decrease in neuron loss and neurodegeneration. It uh, in improves cognition, and uh, there is a huge decrease in omega-6 to omega-3 ratio into the brain. In conclusion, most studies in humans have shown no beneficial effect of marine omega-3 fatty acids, but of course some studies are positive. This could be to insufficient duration, insufficient supplementation. It's very difficult to understand completely why. A high dose on the short term in this mouse model has a beneficial effect in the mouse, so it could be used as a model with lower dose by comparing EPA, DHA, and uh, explaining some mechanistic uh, aspect sustaining familial AD. Now, uh, have a look to uh, diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Uh, type 2 diabetes associates uh, a defect uh, uh, in insulin sensitivity, which is called, what is called insulin resistance and a defect in, uh, of insulin secretion. Insulin resistance first develops, then there is an increase in insulin secretion to compensate for, then at last there is a decrease in insulin secretion so that glycemia increases. Uh, insulin resistance uh, is due to many factors, genetics, sedentarity, obesity, visceral adiposity, high saturated fat diet, stress, lipotoxicity, glycotoxicity, and others. Just have a look to lipotoxicity on the right part of the slide you see that an excess of free fatty acids from adipose tissue, especially uh, in obese patients, uh, is uptaken uh, by uh, muscle cells and generates long-chain acyl-CoA. This long-chain acyl-CoA in turn uh, generates DAG, diacylglycerol, which block the activity of one uh, enzyme, which is called PI3 kinase. It is a key enzyme which permits the translocation of a GLUT4 glucose transporter to membrane and permits the entry of glucose into the muscle cells. If PI3 kinase is blocked, the entry is hampered and insulin resistance occurs. In addition, an excess of uh, non esterified fatty acid in islets induces apoptosis here in C and this apoptosis uh, is associated to a decrease uh, in insulin secretion. It is uh, apoptosis of beta cells. There are quite a lot of animal models of insulin resistance and diabetes which have been developed over the years. They are all of interest. They are all limitation. The most frequently used for study of omega-3 are high-fat diet, a normal diet with low dose of fish oil, dexamethasone as a model of insulin resistance, and uh, zucchero rat. Uh, just an example of difference between mouse and uh, humans, it's, it's uh, the architecture of islets uh, as compared in humans uh, on A, uh, monkey on B, you see it's not very different, but for mouse on C, it's quite different between uh, humans and mouse and for pig, it's intermediary. And if we look at insulin secretion induced by glucose, you see here the profile in mouse, an F, and you see that it's very different on the profile on the, in human beta cells. The first pioneering study was from Storian and co-workers and published in Science uh, in 87. Uh, they uh, studied three groups of rats. One group fed a normal show diet, 6% fat. A group with a high fat diet from sunflower oil, 60%. It's very rich in omega-6 fatty acids. And a third group in which 20% of fat was replaced by fish oil. On A and B, 
you can see that there was a decrease in glucose uptake in muscle and an increase in uh, hepatic glucose production, which was related to severe insulin resistance. When, when fish oil was introduced into the high-fat diet, insulin resistance no more occurred. So omega-3 were able at this very high dose to prevent completely insulin resistance. Uh, subsequently, we studied the basic mechanism sustaining this beneficial effect, and we used the same uh, models of rat, and uh, we observed that PI3 kinase in liver, in muscle, and in adipose tissue was severely depressed by sunflower oil. When fish oil was given, there was no effect in liver, but the decrease was completely prevented in muscle, as well as the decrease in GLUT4 transporter, which was completely restored. And uh, there was a differential effect between GLUT4 and PI3 kinase in uh, adipose tissue. So that it's an explanation, uh, partly, only partly, because uh, in liver, no effect, uh, of the uh, positive effect of omega-3 fatty acid to prevent insulin resistance by preventing the decrease of PI3 kinase in muscle. Uh, subsequently, Nation and co-workers have shown that uh, high-fat diet with soft flour induce huge increase in triglycerides uh, in liver and in muscle, and that fish oil uh, almost completely prevented the increase in liver and completely prevented it in muscle. So the hypothesis is that fish oil prevents insulin resistance by alleviating lipotoxicity through an increase in fat oxidation, at least in a rat and with this high dose. Uh, we performed a study in humans to compare with rodent and uh, we only look at the right part of uh, the left figure uh, we gave to the healthy subject uh, an oral glucose load, and we look at glycemic response, insulinemic response, and C-peptide response. And what we obtained that was glycemic was not different before or after 1.8 gram of EPA plus DHA over three weeks, but insulin response was diminished by 40%, which, is, which strongly suggests that uh, it increased insulin sensitivity. And recently, by using euglycemic hyperglycemic clamp, we also uh, observed that omega-3 <coughs> increases insulin sensitivity, which is a very positive effect. However, when using a low dose of uh, fish oil in rats, 2% in normal diet instead of 20% in a high-fat diet, we obtained, it was not awaited, a decrease of PI3 kinase, kinase in liver and in muscle. When we use dexamethasone, a glucocorticoid, which is known to induce severe insulin resistance, we also observed a huge decrease in PI3 kinase in liver and muscle, and there was an additive effect of omega-3 with dexamethasone to inhibit PI3 kinase which was not very encouraging about the ability of omega-3 to prevent insulin resistance induced by this glucocorticoid. Uh, another study uh, has shown also that uh, fish oil amplify dexamethasone-induced muscle atrophy in rats, uh, which is not also good news. And very recently, we uh, performed a study in humans in order to compare to rodents. And we observed that with, uh, in a healthy subject, oh, sorry, uh, dexamethasone induced a severe insulin resistance here in dot bars as compared to control in, uh, in white, in muscle, and increased uh, hepatic glucose production in dot bar. Uh, so this insulin resistance was awaited. When we have given uh, 850 milligram EPA DHA, we observed that there was an aggravation of insulin resistance in muscle and in liver. So when I've analyzed this data, I was a little bit depressed about omega-3. Uh, in conclusion, we only look at uh, the two last sentence, sentences. 
omega-3 are able to, uh, to increase insulin sensitivity in healthy humans, which is good news. Uh, they are unable to reverse insulin resistance in patients with type 2 diabetes, but the decreased plasma triglycerides, which is a positive effect. And they are efficacious to prevent type 2 diabetes in uh, epidemiological studies in Eskimos and Asian population, but apparently not in Western population. Just have a look now to uh, cancer. If uh, the decrease in PI3 kinase activity may be deleterious for metabolism, it could be uh, very uh, positive and very interesting for uh, cancer. Uh, we uh, confirm that EPA and DHA decreased PI3 kinase activity in a yeast based model, and recently, uh, Kim and co workers have shown that DHA was able to induce apoptosis of uh, cell lung. Uh, cancer cells by decreasing PI3 kinase activity and mTOR signaling. A very uh, interesting model is a FAT1 uh, transgenic mouse model. This model has been developed uh, in Harvard by Kang and uh, it uh, he introduced a gene which is absent in mammals uh, which is called FAT1. Uh, this gene uh, is from a worm, and uh, it has the ability to convert N minus 6 fatty acids to a N minus 3 fatty acid endogenously, independently uh, of diet. Uh, when 10% uh, safflower oil rich in omega 6 is given to the wild type, type sorry, to the wild type mouse, you see that there is a very high ratio omega-6 to omega-3. When the same diet is given to fat one mouse, you see that the ratio is quite lower in every tissue where it has been studied. And uh, two studies uh, have used fat one mouse uh, to evaluate uh, development and growth of some cancer. On the left, uh, it was a breast cancer and the right a melanoma. And in fat one mouse, the growth of the cancer was quite lower in fat one mouse as compared to, uh, to, compared to uh, wild type mouse. So uh, this model is of interest for study of cancer and mechanistic uh, studies have been performed showing that it's by inhibiting PI3 kinase and uh, beta-catenin pathway that uh, uh, the growth of cancer is, is depressed. Uh, two last slides. One to show that independently of the quality of studies in animal models, there are some pitfalls of uh, publication. Here in a meta-analysis of many publications, he also observed quite a lot of uh, problems uh, with the publication so that it has been proposed uh, arrive guidelines for reporting animal research in 2012. And at last, my general conclusion could be that animal models are very useful for study of effects of omega-3 because ethics precludes some types of studies in humans especially mechanistic studies, biopsies of liver, which are not possible at all. Models chosen must have the best translational potential for the specific question addressed. And anyway, limitation exists, even in primates, so that study using human cells, tissues, organs, and population remain necessary to draw definitive conclusion about effects whatever positive, negative, or absent. Thank you very much.